Retailers are undergoing something of a slow motion apocalypse. More stores are closing their doors for good. I didn't realize they were really close. It's all about their bottom line. Any retailer that operates brick and mortar stores has to start saying, if all I do is distribute products, I am going to go out of business. The decision to close Borderlands was one of the more difficult decisions that I've made in my life. This probably sounds like a story you've heard before. Small bookstore besieged by rising costs goes out of business. But this story is different. This is a story about a bookstore that survived. This is Alan Beats, the owner of Borderlands Books and Cafe in San Francisco. Borderlands is the largest English language store specializing in science fiction, fantasy, mystery, and horror in the world. For years, Borderlands has been a community hub in San Francisco's Mission District. It's a place where people meet, share ideas, write screenplays, or pretend to work while actually playing Minecraft. When San Francisco passed a new minimum wage law, Alan Beats supported it, but he also knew it would put him out of business. Cafes and restaurants have the flexibility to raise their prices to accommodate higher wages. Bookstores don't. Unlike almost every other retail business out there, books have a price actually printed on the cover. So while the Borderlands Cafe could potentially survive, the bookstore wouldn't. If we didn't increase our prices, we would be losing over $30,000 a year. Borderlands is, and was at that time, the best thing I've ever created. It meant a great deal to a huge number of people. And the idea of ending that was really, really unpleasant and very difficult. Alan then decided to hold a community meeting. People came to voice their shock and sadness about the store closing, but they also came with ideas about how to keep it open. We received a lot of the same suggestions that I was expecting that I had already considered and discarded. And then uh, one gentleman asked if it would be possible for us to create a, a membership card that we could sell that would allow him to pay more for books. And I thought that was possibly one of the dumbest, craziest ideas I had ever heard. And I said, so who here would be interested in doing something like that? Just raise your hands. 150 people who were present, about half of them raised their hands. And yeah, that is kind of a crazy idea. But it told Alan something important. At least some portion of the people who wanted to keep the store open were willing to pay to make it happen. They came up with a plan. They'd sell annual sponsorships for $100 that would come with some membership perks. We uh, didn't figure it was gonna work. We're gonna keep on closing. But if we can get 300 sponsors by March 31st, we'll change course. And we announced it and the phone did not stop ringing. In 42 hours, we had 300 sponsors. And by the end of 2015, there had been almost 900 people who sponsored the store. It's been four years, and Borderlands has more than survived. With roughly 600 people voluntarily sponsoring the store most years, the community aspects of Borderlands have been able to grow and thrive. And they've been so successful that they also crowdfunded the purchase of their own building to stay ahead of San Francisco's rising rents. What retailers are recognizing is that this is really the, the untapped value that they can bring. This is Doug. He's a retail futurist. It's this notion of gathering like-minded consumers in the same place and letting them really enjoy not just the category of product, but also enjoy the community of people that like that product as much as they do. In other words, the stores that already offer community and connection just have to find a way to monetize it if they want to survive. Places like this. This is Leif Smith, the owner of Mission Comics and Art, a comic shop around the corner from Borderlands. And you can probably guess where this is going. Comic book stores are a thin margin business. They're usually undercapitalized, and they're a bit of like canaries in the, in the coal mine. After several years of growth, 2017 hit Leaf's store hard, and he wasn't sure he'd be able to continue operating. So I planned a sort of emergency community meeting to involve other people and see if something could be done to keep the store open. 
like Borderlands, Mission Comics began offering a way for customers to sponsor the store. The sponsorships have allowed them to weather the storm and continue to maintain a presence in the Mission District. Shopping is human. We have a need to be out. We have a need to commune, to enjoy things with people. Right from the very beginning of time, retail was about that personal connection. And so retail is now rediscovering its function in society as being that gathering place. People spend most of their time in one of two, two places. They're either at work or they're in their home. But there's a third kind of place, and it's that social public interaction. Bars serve that purpose, coffee shops serve that purpose, and I think that bookstores serve that purpose as well. It is a community touch point. You know, as people's lives change and grow, there's a lot of value in the sort of consistency of going to your comic book store and talking to someone that you've known for years about something that you're really passionate about. It's valuable to me, and now I see it really valuable to my customers. For me, I want my kid to grow up in a city with bookstores. I'm willing to pay a little for that, the same way I'd support public radio or become a member of a museum. The storefronts in our communities are a statement of our values, so we'd better get creative in supporting the shops that represent not just the things we need to buy, but the things we love and aspire to. If you like this video, you'll probably like our others too. So subscribe and check out our other content on Facebook and YouTube.